Howdy, hackers, and welcome to another episode of Fally TV. This is take number four. I've managed to record it three times and not have the microphone work. Twice yesterday and already one time today where it didn't work, but now I'm checking. And yes, the meter is moving, so we are also recording sound. Uh, according to the normal schedule, we are releasing stuff on Fridays, and uh, I'm not really sure when you will watch this, but this might not be on a Friday, or possibly it's a bonus episode on a Friday. Uh, but there is a very specific reason for, for publishing this on this very day, and that is the fact that we have just released Alternate Reality, the dungeon on Cartridge. And let me just give you a brief background on that. I was working with the game Knights and Slimes, um, and um, well, for uh, I, I can't say that I worked with cartridges before, so of course I know my action replay and I know how that one works, and I worked with previous, like uh, earlier cartridges where you just poke in DEOO and, and then you're all done. Uh, but but I haven't worked with Easy Flash or, or any of the others and how that works. So. I had a little chat with Mike, a Knight Rider of T-Rex, and uh, and then they also put out a version of Knights and Slime. So it was the original was on cartridge, and he cracked it and then put it back on cartridge in his new version, and or like in in the form that he would like to see it. So. Um, so it's quite clear that he understands cartridges. It's also clear that he has all the methodology and all the tools in place so he could release stuff on cartridge. And I thought and I found that really great. So I wanted to have alternate reality on cartridge as well. And when I asked him if we could collaborate in making one of those, it shows that he actually asked me before. So <laughs> When we released it, he actually asked me, and and I don't really know if what what why I didn't want to do anything with it, but uh, um, yeah, at least I didn't respond favorably to him, and and my apologies for that. That was stupid, but uh, I hope we could agree on that. It turned out really well this time. So this is a collaboration between T Rex and Fairlight. So it's F, it's now F L, and then in parentheses T, and then Rex. Very cool. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the main screen here. So uh, the I did all the like the old cracking work and all of that. So Mike didn't need to do that. He took all the assets and made it into uh, something that loads off the cartridge. The biggest work that we had to implement was changing the loading and saving of character data so that that could both load and save from disk but also to the cartridge. And um, the game has this feature of, um, uh, of like a status byte and a rejoin counter. So the status could either be empty. Um, so we are now on the disk. The disk can hold four different slots and then there is an index that keeps track of all those four. So that is a separate file. Uh, and that separate file holds the status for uh, for empty which means that there is no file for for that corresponding slot uh, on the disk or it could be okay and that is when a character is it is created or and saved properly and and nothing really happened with that character uh, so that's an okay thing but then you have lost and and lost is when you sort of check out the character from the disk. So think of it like you have documents on like a web service or something and you check it out and on the web service you're doing that to prevent somebody else from from manipulating the same file. But the same logic sort of applies here. So which is when you think of it really smart. They when you when you load the file you're also making the changes to the index. And then the character is technically like lost in the index file. And when you play him, you you update the data and then you save him back. And then he would retrieve back to the OK status because then he's like properly checked in. But if the character dies or you quit without saving, that lost status, the checkout status, is retained. So 
when you want to load that character again, uh, you would receive some sort of penalty. So, you know, those strength and, and intelligence and, and uh, charisma and whatever, the, the, the standard parameters you get when you get a new character. You get a, a deduction of one on one of those. It randomizes which one. So you get that penalty. And then you're back to like status. Okay, you can save that character. But, but, uh, uh, yeah, so retaining the that status byte and also retaining the counter, so the number of times you have rejoined, um, the number of times you have received uh, that penalty is, is a specific counter also in this index file. Uh, so we had a bit of a hassle before we got that working. We had to some sort of establish some sort of like API between the code in the loader and the saver and the uh, the cartridge code. So Mike developed that and, and uh, we discussed that and how that should work and eventually got something that works for us both on the load save side and also on the cartridge side. Um, yes, we should talk more about the load and save but we can get to that when we get to the menu. Uh, so the first thing I would like to show you is, is of course the instructions. Uh, this was on a separate disk before, uh, but now we managed, or Mike managed to squeeze that into the, the cartridge as well. So everything is in like one big package on the cartridge, unless you would like to load and save from disk. But that is sort of something you can format separately. Uh, I, I should for first point out the logo. So Shine sent this logo to me a long time ago and it hasn't been used and uh, and I really like it but uh, there was no real place for it and given that our demo production is rather low and uh, and when I do intros they are typically I need them to be compact so I can't have like big bitmap logos but here it works really well so <laughs> that's where it is Andy you have now seen it it looks fantastic in the context here Okay, so let me just press here because um, there is a lot of new stuff here. Um, the, the viewer here is viewing a text file and we have done a bit of a change to the text file describing the new features and all of that. But, but the predominant part here is not like the actual text. It's there and it's convenient, but the actual text is not what I would like to point out. This is the updated document viewer that Pitcher developed. Now, Documax 4.5. Uh, so, one of the things it has is the fact that you are now having both the standard font and... Uh, 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 I should turn off the music. So, it, it both has the standard font and also uh, the um, custom font supporting a number of the Petsky characters that is used for, for drawing the logos up and uh, in the top here and also in the bottom. So uh, that, that is now fully supported. So we can have like inside Petsky graphics, but we can also have a cost custom font at the same time. Music was the new tune by, uh, by uh, Danko and you might recognize this as the standard Druid tune, Druid 2 tune, but it's actually not. It's, it's a, like a remake from Danko and if you sit there listening to it, you can hear it's not the same thing, but, uh, but it's, it's quite close to the original. Uh, there is also this theme, so uh, we have thrown in a number of, or James has, uh, has thrown in a number of like theme options, so basically color, color uh, patterns that would help you, or yeah, well, color options, so you could select between a few of those. Uh, I, I'd like to keep this uh, gray on gray thing here, but uh, you do have the other options if you prefer that. Uh, but, but the biggest change is uh, the previous one only had like jumping screens back and forth, but now we can actually scroll per line as well. So you can scroll up and down but you can also jump to um, new pages. So Documax Viewer 4.5 Picture, Danko and TNG. Um, I really shouldn't be there because my, my contribution is so little that it's not worth mentioning. So great work Picture, it's, it's there. Uh, and then you press escape for exiting back cleanly to the menu. Okay, uh, and you have, so that was, 
the production notes, uh, giving a bit of background, telling you about the trainers and, and all of that. And then there are the letter from Trilodge and the reference card. I think both of them are sort of in the package when you buy the game. And then you have the guidebook one, two, three, uh, which is something that is sort of developed by somebody online. And, and we have taken that and refined it and, and formatted it for this. And then the survival handbook is, I think, a third party handbook for the game that was sold by somebody else. And, and that is also kind of formatted to this. Um, what we couldn't squeeze in here is the full PDF. It's a 50 page PDF. And if you get this game from somewhere, I'm sure you can fetch our PDF from the same source. Um, it was something we did for the disc version um, and we didn't really need to make any changes, I think. Okay, um, and, and again, this is Mike's way of doing his menus. Uh, this gives you the opportunity of, of kind of entering the game without uh, passing through any of the previous stages. Um, no, so the crack intro, the trainer menu and, and the game intro, you can jump into either one of them. But of course, if you don't see the trainer menu, trainers will not be implemented, which means that um, you will not be able to play the train version of the game. So we will jump right to the beginning and we will see the steps. But of course, we will not spend too much time on each of the steps. But Okay, so this one is old but new. You see this traditional Fairlight intro, and we did a special version for Alternate Reality, the dungeon, with this uh, uh, yeah, game's own intro spaceship circling rather than the green bar. But there is also uh, another aspect to this. Uh, it has a new logo, the Fairlight there, and also the T-Rex. Of course the T-Rex is new, but, but you can also see that the Fairlight logo is new. And um, and I would like to ask you, do you think that one looks better or, or you prefer like the original one? The original one is built up on using like a horizontal and a vertical character. And, and then the character is built, uh, the, the logo is built around only that. This one has a number of additional characters so you could make it round and, and stuff like that. So. It's a bit bigger, not really that much, but, but a number of bytes are, def are defining the additional characters for this. So, are you fancying that one, or do you want the original still? And it's you can see it's cycling between the Fairlight and the T-Rex logo here. Oh yes, if you paid close attention, you could see a release date, and and from that you can tell that that date is is long gone. And uh, yes, so it will be rebuilt with a new date in the in the uh, in the intro. I can promise you that. So when you see this, uh, this is not. I'm I'm not playing the actual final final release. Especially the intro will be updated. Okay, so in game t keys. Um, and I get a bit bored explaining this for the fourth time, but I will do it anyways, because for you it's the first time. Uh, when you meet an opponent down in the dungeon, uh, sometimes the opponent is just not one. It could be an, an entire group of opponents. Let's say that you meet five ghosts or whatever. Uh, so the trainer here will set the number of opponents to one. So basically killing off the other four in one blow. And then it would also set the energy level of that opponent to zero. But the game does not immediately recognize that patch to, uh, to the character. Only the next time it checks will the game uh, see that the guy is now dead and, and you won the fight. So bear with me because there could be a, like a, a few instances between pressing the W and actually seeing the effects. But... Uh, Feel free to press again. It doesn't ha it doesn't hurt harm or hurt anything, but you really don't need to. If pressing it once should do the trick. X. So the, the initial parts of the dungeon where you are landed, that one is well lit. I think it's also it's also saying in the text there it's, you are in a well lit area. Uh, but but. Uh, 
And so when you go into other parts of the dungeon, they are totally pitch black. And of course, you cannot play unless you have some sort of light. Uh, so normally you would buy torches and then eventually you can get like a staff with a light on it, um, which works as sort of a lamp as well. Think of this like the master switch to light in the dungeon. It, when you select yes, you are putting the light on in the entire dungeon and you don't need to fiddle with, with torches and anything like that ever again. It's just light. Um, and uh, it, the, it's sort of a one-way trainer as well. You cannot press X1 uh, again and then like turn uh, the dungeon dark again. It's it's lit once you have lit it. And then the teleport menu. So the game, you can go down and just bash and just uh, like trying to build your character to the best character it can possibly be and you and fill your inventory with stuff. But there is a, like an overarching quest for you to fulfill. So if you would like to complete the game, you need to get to the elevator which takes you to, to the, um, the next episode of the series of game, which is called Alternate Reality, The Revelation, I think it is. Thing is, that was never released. So you you only get there and you get the message that you have reached it. But but uh, if you do that, you have actually managed to complete the game, and it's still worth it, even if it's not, <laughs> even if you cannot use your character in the next game. I'm sorry about that, uh, but uh, that is the way it is. And in order to complete the game, there are a number of things you need to do, uh, and a number of people you need to meet and a number of opponents you need to kill. So there are two aspects of this. There is an inventory uh, of a number of items you need to like, you, you need to get the inventory and bring it to somewhere else and use it in that other location. So the inventory menu will give you access to a number of like superpower um, weapons uh, that we have invented. They are not original to the game. Bacchus's sword is... <laughs> that was, of course, not in the original game. Uh, so, so the inventory has that aspect, super weapons, but it also has uh, access to a number of items you need to fulfill the quest. And the teleport menu allows you to teleport to an arbitrary place inside the dungeon but it will also have like preset destinations to nice to places that you need to go in order to complete the quest. You are saving a lot of walking inside the dungeon by by being able to teleport yourself using this thing. But beware that the teleport menu is one of those things that comes with great power, but also comes with responsibilities. You can teleport yourself to places which will sort of bork the game. And there was no way I could protect you from, from doing stupid s stuff using the teleport menu. So one of the things you should do is teleport yourself not into like where the dungeon is or where the Riddler is. You should teleport yourself to the square in front of them and then you should walk in because otherwise the the game risks getting into like um, an internal loop and you don't want that to happen because then you need to reset and your guy is lost uh okay yeah let's start the actual game it was built from the game uh, version 2.1 and to the best of my knowledge that is the most recent one we re um, launched they had a number of versions. There is a 1.1 and, and then, of course, the 2.1 then. And there you go, you see the spaceship that we ripped and used in the intro. And I will fast forward. So this is the main menu and the, it's sort of also the load menu. Uh, a few of these aspects are, are origi original from the original game. A few of them were introduced by us in the um, in the disc version and uh, and now we have a few additional aspects introduced here in the cockroach version. New is of course new for new character that was of course there already from start. And then C to resume from cart and D to resume from disc. So uh, resume from disc was there. It had like T as the abbreviation but uh, but in order to be some sort of <laughs> use some sort of logic we are using C and D here. 
Uh, and then T for toggle device. Yeah. Um, this was also not there um, in, in the disk version. So if you installed the, or you had all the files on device 8, uh, it will use device 8. And if you started it from device 9, it will use device 9. But now uh, that device is selectable. There is a bit of an issue with the version I have playing with now, so I will not show you when it, <laughs> the toggling devices for, for the save menu, because that doesn't really work yet. <laughs> <laughs> minor glitch it's already fixed and posted it's just that we haven't built that version um, and uh, yeah so prepare the save disk as I referenced before there are four save slots on every disk and there is this index file you could take the uh, the individual um, save files and copy them to another disk and then using this P option to rebuild an index for those files. So ensuring that the game finds the files that you have placed on that particular disk if it lacks the original index. But you can actually also cheat using this. So uh, if you are using this option where there is already an index, this would overwrite the status. Uh, so if your guy is lost and you use this, he would no longer be lost. He would be set to OK and his rejoin counter will be set to zero. So you can use this to resume a character without getting the penalty for resuming a dead guy. Okay. Uh, yes, so we just... Let's see if we have any characters here. Yes, we have Bacchus here. And again, this is uh, this is using warp mode. And you press save, S for save, and you say, select yes, and then we launch the save menu. So here you have the option of using C for cartridge, D for disk, and uh, if you load it from disk and save to disk, it will reuse the same save slot. If you load from cartridge and save to disk, it will use the first empty slot. Um, if you load from disk and save to cartridge, it will save to cartridge. But remind, I'd like to remind you that if you're using load from disk and save to cartridge and vice versa, the, the, um, the instance you loaded will be marked as lost. Because the character from disk that you copied using this method into the cartridge is only okay in the cartridge in that scenario. I will show you this. So the the information here is just something I did for debugging purposes, but uh, I found it rather useful and there is no no special need for deleting it. We might as well bring you that power so you have a, a good overview of uh, what it looks like. Uh, this one gives you the four slots on the disk, one, two, three, four, and you can see here that the first guy is lost, and that is the guy I loaded, so he should be lost. He was okay when we loaded him, but because I loaded him, he was marked as lost, so that is correct. And then the guy that I didn't load was okay, he's now, he's still okay because we didn't touch him. And you can also see that the cartridge here is empty. So the, the sl cartridge slot is empty. And you can see that the last load that the game did was from disk one. So that's slot number one on the disk. And I cannot press T for toggle here, but let's save to cartridge here. And we're done. Okay, uh, let's see again here, disk. There was, uh, so, one of the other things that we fixed was this, Vanderbilt. Um, uh, no. Bugger. Uh, Vanderbilt should have... Um, yes, let's, let's just... I'll, give me a second and I will be back. And we are back. So, uh, playing the game again, resuming from disk and resuming with Vanderbilt. Uh, oh yeah, that wasn't really good, no. Okay, so there you saw the resume 
set. Oh. Bugger, 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 bugger. Mm. So what happened there was I wanted to uh, resume Vanderbilt, but he was marked as lost. So um, and uh, and that prevented me from showing what I wanted to show. And then I had an opponent uh, showing up, and since I was booting the game using not train mode, that meant that I was trying to fight the knight using my bare hands, and that would likely not be very successful. So. Uh, let's use this. So we will use the uh, this feature to now make Vanderbilt uh, okay. Let's see D, and now Vanderbilt is okay. So now we can lo load Vanderbilt here, and uh, yes, we get a bagger, and he leaves. Okay, so this is actually a bug fix. This is what I wanted to show you here. One of the things that we, Jason, uh, has found and wanted to, and we wanted to contribute to perfecting this version. Uh, in many many documents, there is like a description that you can kill the dragon and take up the corpse and then bring it to the um, to the restaurant here and they would offer to buy the corpse to serve their i don't know dragon burgers or whatever they're doing with it uh, when you do this in the real game um it would say um that it would like to buy the uh, the dragon meat for exclamation mark exclamation mark gold so it doesn't say the number so that's sort of an issue and then there is uh, the the other the number here 250 golds it's it's described as 500 golds in other versions of the game but um, 250 is actually correct they are adding 250 because uh, the, uh, the the benefit here is held inside a byte and and as you know a byte could not hold any value higher than 255 so i guess that's why they did it 250 because that fits in one byte uh, the issue was that the print routine converting the number could only handle two characters, uh, so it could only basically print up to 99 the way it was defined. So I fixed that so it prints 250 um, properly uh, rather than the exclamation marks. A 101% version. Uh, not really sure that that is worth that extra percent on the version, but uh, anyways. So these are the few items I was intending to bring up. Um, so the loading and the saving and how the loading from cartridge and, and all of that works. Uh, I didn't show you that they can actually wipe the, the content of the cartridge. So if you receive a cartridge Im image where somebody has been sort of saving their status, uh, you might want to delete that. So there is an option there. W for wipe, I think, in the in the load menu. So that's also there. Yes, that was the version where uh, Fairlight and T-Rex collaborated to give you alternate reality the dungeon, the cart edition. Have a very, very Merry Christmas. Uh, and I would like to welcome you back to Fairlight TV on the uh, new year. But so that was everything for today. Bye bye. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. Fear light.